Hello and welcome to my Paragon tutorial. You guys wanted to know how to protect the Paragon and uh, I'm going to explain it in this video. So we are in a gap game and um, you can build Paragon on several maps. Um, I would say Canis, Wonder, um, Gap and Setons are quite qualified and there are certainly others. But this is just to give you an idea of like popular maps. And um, let me explain what happened so far in this game. Um, I went for a T1 RT drop opening and um, that killed two T2 mixes and delayed the T2 pigeons of my direct opponent. Um, this also delayed the opponent's RAS and ARAS. So I had ARAS by the time uh, the enemy had like almost finished his RAS. Um, unfortunately the T3 air advantage didn't matter because um, the enemy bottom air player was faster with his airboat than uh, my enemy bottom air player. So um, he defended his ally, which I had been harassing. But um, the faster ARAS still had a lot of implications for economy. And I basically had um, full T3 eco um, by the time uh, my opponent uh, was still on T2 eco. And I went for a nuke and um, nuked my opponent. He died in the uh, nuke explosion and um, this created a 4 versus 3 situation. Or you could also say a like maybe 5 or 4.5 versus 3 situation. Because I managed to grab some of the mass the uh, enemy had here and um, only the core base was nuked. So I got mass from here and reinvested it into my own eco rushed uh, a T3 RT together with ally support and this T3 RT had an important uh, role in this uh, Paragon build because you can consider a T3 RT um, a basically expensive mass storage uh, that fights pretty much and usually two T3 RTs can be a game ender on some maps in some situations Sometimes uh, people defend well against RT and then it doesn't work anymore. Like you can't use it. And you can still self-destruct it, um, put it into a Paragon and uh, rebuild it later multiple times. Right? So this is one way of building Paragons. You can build them simply by having an expensive base and committing um, T3 RT and partial economy suicide and the mass of these structures will then be put into the Paragon so it finishes quicker. Uh, you cannot just start building a Paragon as soon as you have the eco for it and think you get away with it. That doesn't work. You have to fight first, um, such as nuke your opponent, get an RT, have some battlefield impact before you go for the Paragon and you can reclaim that RT to make it happen. In situations where there isn't as much fight going on and you just um, like outskill your opponents uh, eco-wise, um, you would probably just build lots of hives and spam RAS preset support ACs. And these RAS preset support ACs for Aeon can be equipped with the sacrificial system upgrade. And the sacrificial system costs almost nothing, but um, the uh, RAS support AC generates eco. Um, and build power and with a sacrificial system you can sacrifice it into your paragon and um, build it faster so you don't usually hard build it in this game I self-destructed my T3 RT and uh, grabbed a lot of reclaim from everywhere across the map and that allowed me to get uh, to get this paragon okay so um, made a salvation when I had it can take a look at the rain pretty quickly. See that? Beautiful, right? This is this is the sort of rare site you only see like uh, twice a week. So pretty unique. Beautiful, right? Okay, so let me summarize again uh, three ways of building a Paragon. Way number one, 
support ACUs on RAS preset with sacrificial system. And that speeds up the Paragon production. Second, self-destructing valuable structures and parts of your eco to get it quicker. And third, you hard build it on reclaim, which is what I did this game. And you, um, of course, want to protect it, right? So you're interested in how to protect uh, the Paragon. That's why you're here. Or at least that's why some of you are here. And, um, well, you need teleport defense, usually a mix of T1 and T2 PD. You want stationary shields. And uh, you want to have multiple anti nukes. Um, here I just have one, but I'm getting a second one. Basically, your entire base depends on the anti nuke, as well as the Paragon, as well as the ACU. If you lose either of the three, uh, you lose the entire base. So you don't want to uh, have only one anti nuke. You don't want to have an ACU without shield upgrade, and this one has the second shield upgrade. And uh, you don't want to have only one Paragon. Same concept. Right? You avoid cluster risks by building multiple. And um, we are going to see a kill here. Lots of strats coming in, and they're going to kill red. So, no more air. I don't really have air. Blue doesn't have a lot of air. Air is lost. Problematic, right? So, how are we going to defend this Paragon? We have Asylum Spam on top of what I already mentioned. Here they are, um, here, see? Like, um, just like in the RT tutorial, they are on patrol and protect the Paragon. And, um, and there are some things in this game I didn't do, but you usually should do. You should ask a UEF player for a dome shield upgraded um, shield preset. Um, just like I showed in the RT tutorial, right? And this shield preset is going to protect your Paragon. And um, it adds an extra layer of shields, and it has a ton of HP. Uh, what's important about the shield preset is that you um, ask the player who builds it for you uh, to also give it to you, because teleport support SEU is a common way of killing Paragon. And um, of course the teleport defense takes care of the support SU itself, but there will still be team killing because let's say the teleport support SU teleports here and the UEF player's shield support SU is here. Then the shield support SU will try to fire at the teleport support SU and hit the Paragon instead. And to avoid this team kill situation, you ask the UEF player to give this teleport, uh, sorry, this shield preset support SU to you. And that's how it won't hit the Paragon. It will shoot right through. This is just how this game works. Pretty stupid, but this is how it is. And um, another factor is uh, when people use teleport support SUs against Paragons, what you usually can't avoid is the death nuke. The death nuke deals around 1000 damage, and um, sometimes shields tank, uh, tank it, sometimes they don't. It's more or less random, like it's a complicated function, but uh, it is not obvious. Sometimes the teleport support SU is outside the only shield of something, and the shield doesn't protect the unit you want to protect. The damage just goes right through the shield. Sometimes the teleport support SU is inside the shield, right next to the unit you want to protect, and the shield tanks the entire damage, and the unit doesn't take any damage. It doesn't make any sense, but that's how it is. So. The interaction between shields and death nukes of support SUs and SUs is quite strange. Just have to get used to it. So, essentially, massive teleport support SU is always going to kill a Paragon. And you can't do anything about it, simply because of the death nukes. So, um, there's a limit to what you can do to protect your Paragon. Shield assist is important. Right now this Paragon is not under RT fire, but if it was, I would shield assist it. With engineering stations or engineers or support SUs, I would choose one shield and assist it very heavily. And that's how the shield doesn't go down under RT fire, or Scathis fire even. Faction mixing shields is also useful. Seraphim shields are larger, so they act like a second layer. Um, Cyber shields are upgradable multiple times, so they have ghost HP. UEF shields can be upgraded once, which Aeon shields can. So even UEF shields are useful, even though 
you don't benefit from them as much as from Seraphim and Cyber Shields. And as I said, engineering stations, especially hives, are super good because they allow you to flexibly build more shields, uh, reclaim um, depleted ones, rebuild them quickly, and so on. Like, super useful. So I have some drones from my UF player, and uh, these are building all the stuff. So some sort of engineering stations are usually necessary for Paragon builds. And once again, the ACU HP upgrade is extremely important. So this ACU, oops, where is it? Um, got some UI thing going on, which is kind of strange, but the ACU is here it is, and it has the second shield. Super expensive upgrade, but it protects the ACU. So Antilles are protected uh, by artillery defense and shields. Paragon is protected, got a second Paragon, and um, that's it, right? You want to protect all weaknesses, including the ACU. Because this is what can happen anytime. Your apply gets uh, sniped, and uh, the bombers just go right for the Paragon. So you can see he's uh, moving his bombers together. Uh, this unit was given, so I get it back, but it dies now, so it doesn't matter. And there we go. Just picking up some mass extractors on the way, and then he's attacking the Paragon. And let's see what happens. So again, I don't have shield support as you from UEF. I don't have shield assist from Hives. And um, I'm not doing everything I could to protect this Paragon. It's also under RD fire, so here's what happens. Gets hit, and the RT shell connects, and it dies. Right? So, guys, this is how you protect a Paragon. That's right. Uh, your SU has the shield, so it can survive the Paragon explosion, unless it's super close, right? It didn't die, so... Or m maybe all shields are down, so it was just the power stall in the moment the Paragon got sniped. So, uh, Paragon died, can't protect it, you can protect it to some extent, but you cannot protect it against everything, even with all the measures I've taken. Even if I've taken even more measures. Sometimes Paragons just die, that's how they work. So uh, that's why we have the second Paragon, right? The whole attack is over, no more bombers left, two, three, four bombers, five bombers, just traveling in random locations, flying over Sam, doesn't matter, right? Attack is over, and we have the second Paragon. And this is how you protect a Paragon, you just build two. You do the most basic uh, things you need to uh, ensure some protection, which is the anti nuke the teleport defense, some sort of anti-air somewhere, or air. Um, shield upgrade on SEU, um, get some stationary shields and uh, a patch of mobile shields, maybe add uh, shield support SEUs or hives or both, right? But the best thing you can do to protect your Paragon is build a second one. Because you will only be limited by build power once you have it. And getting extra drones is not expensive. So as you can see, um, the Paragon that was given to my ally is now back to me. And um, I am building a third Paragon in that same game. And that's going to be uh, up quite quickly, right? You can see how fast it's growing. Simply because I'm only spending build power, I'm not spending massive power, thanks to the other Paragon. And that's how you're supposed to do it. Uh, you can do some things to protect your Paragon, but it won't be perfect. And that's why you avoid cluster risk by building, uh, by building multiple Paragons uh, from the economy bonus of the first one. So, to summarize, um, protecting a Paragon um, is probably the most difficult and the easiest task at the same time. Uh, the most difficult, because if a Paragon dies, it's super bad, and um, the Paragon is also very vulnerable due to its size, its low HP. So, that makes it difficult. But what makes it easy is um, that as soon as you have the first Paragon, you can get an infinite number of Paragons, right? You can build them anywhere on the map, build the same defensive structures, and at some point it won't be economic anymore to target the Paragons for the enemy, because as soon as you lose one, you rebuild it. 
and you always have at least one. So I hope you learned something. Um, if you want to protect a paragon, build two paragons. And uh, see you next tutorial.